Hey, and welcome back to the channel. Um, so if you watched my last video, you'll know that I've been uh, messing around with my DIY CNC machine, trying to get a little bit more use out of it. Um, so something I decided I'm going to try and do is some engraving. So hence, I bought this big pile of these little uh, kind of one millimeter thick aluminium dog tags. Um, and I got some little uh, small V-bit engraving bits. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to try and engrave some stuff onto this little um, dog tags. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I want to try and set a goal for myself, something to actually make. So uh, recently enough, myself and some friends of mine, we all attended a mountaineering course and we got a certificate for, you know, mountaineering navigation and stuff like that. So in honor of that, I made a matching set of these little backpack lanyard things. Uh, so what I'm going to do is onto the uh, little key ring here. I'm going to stick one of these dog tags on uh, and I'm going to engrave it with a little commemorative message for the thing we did. So it'll just be a little memento thing that you can clip onto your bag. So this is something useful. It's not just something abstract that I want to see. Can I engrave? I'm actually have a purpose for it. So yeah, we're going to do this uh, in this video and yeah, you guys can watch along with the whole progress. Okay. So this is um, basically what uh, the setup that I'm going to be using to do this bit of engraving. So there's two parts to this. Um, the first bit is this piece you can see in front of you here. So this is just a really simple fixture that I'm modeled up for this. So all it is is the dimensions don't really matter that much. All that matters is that this little pocket that I've dimensioned out is a little bit bigger than the actual dog tag itself. Um, and the other dimension that matters is the depth of this little pocket. So I have it modeled here as about, uh, it's a one millimeter depth from the surface. So this will give us a, a couple of things. Uh, basically what I'll do is I'll stack up my pieces of wood um, to make the little kind of platform. And then I'll position my cutter for somewhere sort of centered on that piece of wood um, and then let rip to cut this pocket out. Um, and what this will do then is the machine will churn away. It'll mill out this pocket and what should be the case then is that the bottom of this pocket should be perfectly perpendicular with the plane of the machine. Um, and so uh, by doing that, if I put a stick, a dog tag down to this, which I use the little uh, tape and super glue trick. So you put a piece of tape on the bottom of your dog tag and a piece of tape on this and you put a little bit of super glue in between, you press it down and that'll hold it nice and firm. Um, and that means that the top surface of the dog tag should be basically perpendicular to the tool head, which is gonna come in then and do the engraving. So root the little pocket first, and then it doesn't matter if the material is skew ways perpendicular to the machine. So if it starts like this, as it mills out, it'll mill a perpendicular pad for the piece to sit on. So it's just a very simple little fixturing uh, technique. You can do this as well if you have a bigger piece. Um, on like a proper CNC machine, what you do is you put down a spoil board. It's the very first operation you do and you'd get it to cut the entire surface of it. So it's level. So you, everywhere on your machine is perpendicular to your tool head. I haven't done that and I don't really have the tooling and the machine's not <laughs> really capable of milling out a huge area um, very flat like that. So this I think will do kind of as a localized sort of uh, flat perpendicular spot in this case. Um, so yeah, that's super simple. That will be one tool path I'll be cutting. And then the next thing I have is I have modeled the actual dog tag itself. So that's one of these little guys. Um, the model isn't exactly right, but again, it doesn't have to be because I'm not really doing anything with it. All that matters is the thickness is right. This is about one millimeter thick. Um, and then I sort of have this, this kind of bounding box for the text that I'm going to be engraved uh, should fit in sort of inside the center of this. So all I have to do is roughly find the center of this when I'm setting up the machine. And then I know that the engraving tool will be able to find its way around because I've measured the major dimensions of this to be correct. So like the curves don't really matter. I just did them just for style points. Um, but yeah, they don't exactly match. Um, so yeah, then what I've actually done here to engrave, so to do engraving in Fusion 360 with text is super easy, um, um, with any profiles really, all you have to do is you just have to create a sketch on the surface that you want to engrave, um, and you have to provide all the bounds that you're going to. So it has to be a, what's called like a closed, 
um, contour and then it can engrave it. So uh, in this case, the contours I'll be engraving are between these two lines. So this little kind of area between the two lines, that will be something that will be engraved, which will basically just be a box border around my text. And then the actual text itself here that I have, uh, that will all be engraved as well. Um, so if we flick over then to the manufacturer workbench, we can have a look at that. So we have two setups here, one for each of my uh, bits that's gonna be done. So if we look here, this is the first one. So this is like the uh, clearing path that'll be done, which is my milling operation to level this out. So uh, if I hide my uh, dog tag, what's that? Yeah, so we can see this is the uh, milling operation. So the uh, cutter is gonna come down, spin around, and then it'll uh, make cut out this, basically this whole pocket and hopefully, <laughs> If I've done everything right, it'll be the nice perpendicular surface that I want for the cutting tool. Um, so then once that's done, I'll swap out the cutter and then I can run my second uh, tool path. Uh, so if I hide this one again, and let's have a look at my second one. So the second one here is this engraving tool path. So this is super simple, you can see I have my little V-bit engraving tool set up here. And all it's gonna do is, it's just going to run along the inside of all of these contours that I have selected. So it'll do this outline first, and then it'll go and do all the text. Um, and yeah, that's that's about it, really. And uh, it's pretty simple doing it this way. I have it set up using the same stock material so that all the references for the geometry is the same. So effectively, what I have, to, all I'll have to do is when I've set this up, um on my machine all i have to do then is pop in the the dog tag roughly try and center my engraving tool in the center of the actual dog tag and then click the go button uh, it should move out to the back corner here and then should engrave it um that should be it i'm hoping this works well um i don't know about the depth of cut so this is very soft material it's the dog tags are made out of aluminium so they should engrave quite easily um the only thing is to set the depth of cut with engraving is a little bit finicky you can't do it directly so um basically your depth of cut is set by how wide the things that you're engraving are so if you want to engrave something that's quite wide uh, the depth of the engraving will be deeper because all it does is it just sticks the bit in the middle and then just pushes down until it reaches effectively the width which it calculates based on the angle of the tip of the v-bit um so i've made i've selected my font here to be quite a narrow font and i've made these two uh, boxes quite close together so that it should be pretty shallow um when i do the post-processing it says it'll cut about 0 0.15 millimeters into the surface of this which i think should be fine um but it remains to be seen um I'll find out when I click run <laughs> and then I'll know if I need to come back and change something. So yeah. Um, yeah, so I have my G code generated for these already and nothing to it, I think, but to do it. So yeah, I'm gonna go set all this up, cut out my pocket and yeah, do some engraving. Hopefully it works out. All right, I think we're ready to cut out the pocket uh, for the fixturing. So just click the button, see what happens. Definitely working anyway. Seems pretty smooth, so we'll see what the final result's like. I'll leave this guy run. Okay, so we are crunching, uh, still moving away, 
Bill Cotton appears to be on dimension so far. Nice little pattern in the middle from that machining. Lovely. A few minutes left and we should be all done. And there we have it, the final results. Uh, pattern looks good. Um, there's a little more step over than I wanted. I actually got the dimension of my end mill wrong. It doesn't really matter. Still managed to uh, carve it out dimensions. It's nice. The box is a good shape. Seems to be right. Um, one thing that's a bit off is the depths. Um, you can very clearly see though the taper. There's a ridge here. There's not really much of a ridge here. So that's good. That's uh, served its purpose to flatten it out. Should have been a bit deeper though. So I think my uh, Z might have been a bit wrong. I'm not sure why exactly that was. But uh, I can investigate that later. So yeah, we're ready anyway. It's a nice flat surface to glue this guy down onto to do some engraving so that's going to be next Okay, I think we're ready to go. We're all set up in the right position. Gonna click the button and do our first test engraving. So let's hope this works out. Okay, there we go. All done. Um, and that worked out pretty damn well. Uh, let's get a closer look. So from here, uh, I was fairly confident that I had something that was working out pretty well. Um, there was a couple of issues though, a little bit. A lot of it was to do with the Z uh, axis height. So for that first cut, um, it was actually quite deep into the material. So I had set up the cutter and it was sort of pressing into the work a little bit, which I was marked as the zero Z position. So then when it moved down, into the work to engrave that it was actually biting a little bit too deep into it it still worked but it was just giving it it was just a little bit messy on all the lines so from there the basically the next challenge was to try and make this repeatable to get my other few that i wanted to make out of it and i ran into some issues with kind of missing the surface and things like that so there's mostly setup issues really that my leveling approach most for the most part worked but there was kind of inconsistencies where if I didn't use just enough glue on the tape it would lift up on certain edges or you know be a little lower and also turns out that the pieces weren't fully uniformly thick to within the 0.1 millimeters or so that I needed so ran into a couple of issues there but in general I was able to kind of muddle through and manage to get um, some pretty nice engravings out of it couple of little lines missing here and there but i think it just adds a little bit of character to the actual pieces more than anything so i'm not really worried about it i think the setup problems can be fixed pretty easily um, i think what i might do is i might root out a little bit of a deeper pocket to give me some edges which i can then line the pieces into so that'll at least kind of give me a square area that i can set the piece into and then if i figure out a little bit of a more consistent way of fixturing it down hopefully i'll be able to get it working a little bit better what it did actually determine as well is that over indexing towards having it a little bit deeper is a better thing because then it's less likely to miss the surface and miss out some of the engraving so it doesn't matter too much if a little bit is deeper than another bit as long as you get all the lines in place So these are our final products all done and dusted. So have 
these ones attached onto the little lanyards. I think they look pretty nice, and the engraving turned out pretty well. So some some of them aren't perfect. This one's a little wonky. I didn't get the alignments just right. Uh, and then this one here, you can see we're missing a little bit of the engraving on that side. So my plan for the leveling worked mostly pretty well, but uh, I did also did also assume that these were going to be perfectly level and to within, you know, 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 millimeters or so, they don't seem to be perfectly true. So uh, there was a few points where the little um, uh, engraving bit missed. But in general, the approach was pretty successful and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, these two down here don't look as good. And that was because I tried some polishing on them. It didn't work very well. So this one turned out a little bit better. I got the polish a little bit more even, but I didn't have any polishing compound or anything. I was literally just throwing it onto a buffing wheel with some water and that didn't really work out super well, but it was more just testing a little bit of a finish. So I'm going to give myself this one and I'm going to give my other two friends these two, which look a little bit better. So yeah, that's really about it. Um, worked out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with how the machine uh, performed. Seems like it had absolutely no problem with um, engraving into the aluminium and I got some pretty nice results. So I count this as a success. And I've discovered a good use for my CNC machine. So I'm going to try and find loads of more things to engrave now <laughs> so that I can justify <laughs> having it in the first place. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video, folks. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.